Welcome to episode three of Linux for Beginners. I'm Andrew, also a beginner of Linux, and I want to take you through the different ways that you can install programs on Linux, specifically Linux Mint. Now, there are a whole host of ways to install programs on Linux, including the online methods where you have uh, software or package managers. You also have app-get in the uh, terminal, and we're going to also cover adding custom repositories for programs like OBS, which still do, uh, do online installs, but you need to add the custom PPAs. We're also going to do offline installs including tar.gz or gz packages, uh, rpm packages, .deb files, install.sh, install files and all that sort of stuff so uh, it should be very interesting. Now potentially the easiest way to install programs is through the software manager, especially on Mint and Ubuntu. Now as you see, I just installed Wine in a couple of clicks, it was very very simple. Obviously I have the NVIDIA settings pre-installed through the driver download that I already did, but if you want to say install Steam, you navigate to the Steam listing, click install. Uh, you might have to accept the third party EULA, but otherwise that's pretty much it. I believe it uses the Synapse package manager on the back end, so it's basically the same as doing it through the command line, but obviously you have a nice easy user interface. It's very very simple to do, you just click install and then it goes and does it uh, and it's just a really easy and enjoyable thing to do. Next up we're going to be using app-get to install Notepad QQ. Now Notepad QQ isn't a program that's readily available so we have to add its personal package archive or PPA. So we're going to do that by doing add apt repository with the location of the PPA for Notepad QQ. We're then going to do uh, apt-get update so that we can update our list of uh, repositories. I also recommend you do app-get upgrade as well to make sure that all of your installed apps are up to date and then you can do app-get install notepad QQ. It's a very simple procedure you will likely need to hit Y once you type in uh, app-get install notepad QQ uh, so that you're you know ready to actually install it but otherwise that's pretty much it. It's a very simple procedure and is done pretty quickly so uh, yeah a very easy one to do just make sure you're selecting the right repository when installing programs. Next up is .run files and in this case we're going to be installing XAMPP uh, just to, as a, an example here. Now we're going to do chmod plus x to give execution privileges to this file and then we're going to do sudo dot slash and then the file name. Now this is slightly different if you're going for .deb files which need to do dpkg uh, and then uh, run the, the file name or if you're using rpm files then it's fairly similar for rpm and then the file name uh, but otherwise it's a fairly simple way, especially in this uh, instance for the dot run command for XAMPP where you're basically installing it the same way as you would a Windows program with a sort of installer window. So nice and simple and hopefully easy to do. So lastly for this video we're going to be covering tar files, so tar.gz, tar.bz2 and the last bit of that file name is what a compression algorithm was used to compress that tar archive. You're still going to need to run the tar command but depending on what compression algorithm you use will depend on what arguments you need to add to the tar command to make it work. Now the x in that command is the uh, telling tar that you want to extract the folder. The j is what compression algorithm you use. If you have .gz files you normally use the letter z or z uh, and then the last f there is to say that the next thing in the string is the file name and location. Now there can actually be quite a lot of differences when it comes to installing programs from these sorts of archives. In this case for Blender it was really simple. All you have to do is do chmod plus x for the Blender executable and then run the program but in some cases you might need to look for a configure file or an install file or install.sh in which case you might have to add execution privileges with chmod plus x to the file and then run that first. You also might have to run the make and then make install commands as well uh, so I've left a link to more detail for that and so that you can see what you need to do in the links in the description down below as well but as you can see Blender was a nice easy one so that's always good to see. You should now have a rough understanding of how to install programs on Linux. It can be a bit complicated at times, especially on those offline installs, but especially for the ones that are app-get and stuff like that and through software managers, it can be pretty easy. Otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful. If you did, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and subscribe. This is the first of three videos in the Linux for Beginners series that I've been doing on Saturdays. Let me know if you want to see more of these videos and especially if you have any feedback on the series so far and what you think I should cover next and that sort of stuff. I do have a few more videos in my list that I want to cover and I will be doing those in a separate group in a week or two's time. So do look out for those as well and if you want to see more of those videos, let me know in the comments down below, let me know on social media 
here and of course subscribe as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you want to support me, these videos, this series and anything else, it'd be awesome if you could A, share the video and subscribe, B, use the Overclocks UK and Amazon affiliate links in the description down below. They genuinely do help me out and support the channel. And C, if you could check out the merch link in the description down below as well. There's some Tech Team GB related stuff and there's just some generally funny tech related jokes there as well. So pick whatever you fancy, that'd be awesome. And otherwise, uh, I'll leave some other videos over here for you in the subscribe button over this side. And otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more of these. And of course, uh, otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.